<sighs> okay. All right, so in this video, basically what I'm doing is uh, I'm going to be experimenting with uh, converting VBH motion caption data with uh, Crazy Talk Animator. And uh, yeah, let's uh, do a little calibration first. I'm using the uh, 17 sensor configuration for the, uh, what the hell is this thing called? Perception Neuron um, IMU motion capture suit. Um, yeah, see, this is something that I'm not gonna be able to get used to just yet there's got to be a better way to calibrate this thing the hands you know when you clap your hands they just go completely through each other you could be standing still your feet are like i guess it just takes a lot of additional calibration but i don't know if that's quite possible yet so i'm just going to go ahead and start recording something because this is more about getting this tested out all right so let's stand here and I'm going to do a basic T-pose so I can have a default something to work with when I'm doing this conversion. Uh, this is something that apparently is required for converting the data into uh, iClone 5 or Crazy Talk Animator 2 usable data. Okay, uh, hi, hello, how are you? Hello, everybody. Oh, that's doing some weird crap with the hands. All right, so let's see here. Did it fix itself? No, the hand it's a, it feels a little bit twisted up. I don't know. Maybe my sensors are not placed in the right spot, but in general, the motion itself is being followed. So I don't know if that's a problem or not. Okay, so, hmm, look at the distance. Who goes there? Is that you, Bob? Oh! All right. Ha, 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 ha. I kid you. I kid you. Oh, all right. Hey, where are you, man? All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> what else can we do? You! Hmm. Get out of here. All right. Let's see. Uh, little nene whip, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. See how my hands are like, um, let's do a little fish in here. I'm, uh, I have to really adjust my hands so I can get the little dummy character to have his hands where I want him to be. All right. Reeling it in. Whoa. Whoa. Did I, I, ca I caught something. I caught something. Bring it in, boy. Let's see. Bring it in. Reel it in. Oh, I need. Oh, oh, that doesn't look right. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Let's let's do it up here. Uh, yeah. That's okay. Uh, all right. Bring it in. There you go. Hey, take a picture. See what I caught? Yeah. Big fish. All right. Anyways, that's enough. So that should give me plenty of data to work with. So stop the recording sit down and let's see if we can switch on over to 3d exchange which it's a bit of an odd situation um uh, i don't know i don't even know how to explain it you know i like the products the uh, uh, real illusions products but i'm not very happy with the way they have crippled the software and the workflow in general. Uh, iClone 6 no longer works with uh, Crazy Talk. 3D Exchange 6 no longer works with iClone 5. <laughs> and as a result, with Crazy Talk as well. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna go ahead and export a frame um, from the T-Pose that way I have something to work with. This is straight from one of the tutorials that I saw in uh, in the Reillusion YouTube channel where they want you to have 
a T-post reference to work with in order to perform the conversion. Uh, let's see. Oh, I don't. I don't think I need that many frames. So, but oh, yeah. now I forgot how many frames there were in the. Wow. Let me do this again. Um. Anyway, I just do it again. Um. Where was I? The. The thing that I ended up doing is that I ended up reinstalling 3D Exchange 5, which apparently is both compatible with iClone 5 as well as iClone 6. So what's the reasoning behind the latest version not being backwards compatible? I don't know. But uh you know, for what I'm trying to do, I, I basically have to go back to um, a previous version of the software. So here I am exporting the sequence. Um, I think that's good enough. Let's uh, switch on over to 3D Exchange version 5. I really don't know what all the uh, improvements are between version 6 and version 5 but I do know th that the functionality I need is in the previous version so here I am loading the initial T pose which is what you are told to do in the reillusion videos once I have that in there I uh, convert it into a non-standard character. And here's the thing. Uh, the Maya human IK thing lines up perfectly with uh, perception urine. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but look at how the legs are positioned. Uh, once I activate the skeleton thing, 3D Exchange does something weird with the legs and sometimes with the hands. So there's some... Uh, there's something wacky there, and I don't know how to fix this. I mean, there should be, or it feels like there should be a way to fix those bones. I don't know how to do that. Maybe I can. Maybe I can readjust it so that so that the the, the I can fix the skeleton before applying the rest of the motions. I don't know. Uh, and if, if any of you guys have any experience with this, please let me know. But uh, in the meantime, what I'm doing now is I'm going to import the full motion into this uh, project now that I have my uh, my initial skeleton converted to a non-standard character um, yeah so um, I'm really trying to get this to work and I have no idea I mean maybe there is a way to adjust these bones so that they're not all wacky like that but I do know that what ends up happening from this point is a direct result of 3d exchange modifying my bone structure this way because you're gonna see in a minute what happens when I actually start using this data um, I've experimented with another inertial motion capture unit. Uh, uh, they call it a, a three sense, uh, the three three sense device or three sense motion capture suit. Uh, it's a 17 unit uh, suit, just like the one I'm wearing right now. I'm using I'm using it with 17 motion sensors. Um, I had the 32 one, which is actually 31 because that extra one is used for a prop. But anyways, I, ha I was using the 32 one, but I realized that for a crazy talk, I really don't need the fingers. I mean, you're not going to get that any useful data from the fingers anyway. So what's the point? Um, so here's the motion capture data being applied. And it works just fine when you play it like this. But once you send it to the... Um, to the perform thing, um, I'm going to get rid of that T pose because I really don't need that anymore. I don't think, but look at this thing. It's already been modified to, to have the, the legs all 
weird and stuff. If I click on the, the motion library itself, the thing works fine. But once I went down here, it's not. So anyways, let's export it. You can see here, uh, 3D Exchange 5 can export to both iClone 5 and 6. I'm going to send it out to uh, my desktop. And because it's a long motion, most likely that's going to take a while. So let's launch Crazy Talk Animator 2. If you're not familiar with Crazy Talk Animator 2, it's this, uh, it's a program that has been mostly targeted to hobbyists and uh, um, amateur animators, basically, you know, uh, the company provides some base characters and they have a marketplace where people who don't actually have the experience to animate can literally create some amazing things with pre-built characters uh, that somebody else made it's kind of like mini clips in a way where you can just mix and match body parts and characters and create animation from the start without having to be necessarily an animator you can be a teacher you can be whatever and you can actually create animated projects for your marketing and you know educational stuff whatever but in the hands of a professional i mean you can do some amazing things i mean these are all custom characters that i've created uh, these are characters, uh, the custom characters themselves, you build them inside of Flash. Uh, it actually goes even faster with a plugin that I developed for Flash called Puppet Producer, which allows you to configure the different body parts and, and the skeletal structure uh, inside of Flash by just, you know, clicking on stuff. So this thing finished, I'm going to get it out of the way. Let's see here and yeah, I gotta find the file I got so much crap on my desktop uh, maybe I can sort it by date modified uh, let's see there you go um, well, let's uh, reverse that sort by date modified there it is so it should be the last file there Okay, so uh, so yeah, it's this program is very simple to use as far as you know for like anybody can create animation and stuff. Now, once you actually get into a professional level type thing where you want to create your custom characters from scratch, and uh, you want to be able to produce custom artwork and animate it and stuff, it can get very tricky. There's really only a small handful of people in the world right now that can actually uh, create these type of characters in an efficient manner. Um, some people have been known to take months just to develop a single character uh, from scratch because uh, Reillusion does provide a template that you can modify to kind of get some custom stuff in there but it's uh, locked into a specific body type so not completely original um, so here it is uh, the motion ca that I captured as you can see I'm dropping it in, I dropped it into Billy and uh, it, it works um, you know it suffers from some kind of weird calibration thing where the motions are not exactly being followed now I never had this problem before uh, I have used this technique uh, with um, uh, BVH data from uh, the uh, the three cents uh, device and convert it over to iClone 5 I, iMotion format and just drag and drop it into my files and it works just fine. I'm going to play that clip right now so that you can see how accurate the results are. So while that's going on, I am also dragging and dropping this uh, additional, this motion capture file, the iMotion, into these characters. And um, and you can see the, the motion is being applied to all the characters as I drop it in there.
seems to be taking a little while to perform certain things in here because probably because I'm screen capturing this at the same time okay yeah yeah, yeah. All right, I don't need to see this whole thing just a little Z depth thing so it you know it, it obviously knows that, that it can step forward and backwards um okay so something is is happening i mean obviously the uh the bones are being mapped to to the bones from the motion capture but some kind of misalignment is happening between 3d exchange and the the original BVH data so one of the things that I used to do before was I would actually use the connect motion capture uh, plugin for iClone to do a lot of the mocap stuff that I would apply into crazy talk but since that's not doable anymore ever since I upgraded uh, that's been thrown out the window and now with the motion capture suits um, which are a lot more affordable that particular workflow step is it's kind of irrelevant now it would be nice to be able to motion capture this stuff directly into iClone so that you can modify everything in 3d before committing to it and bringing it back into crazy talk um, Yeah, some, some people ask me, why don't I just go ahead and do 3D stuff? And I mean, quite honestly, if I knew a way to do 3D CGI in a way that it would look um, like hand-drawn 2D stuff, I would more, more be more than happy to do it. But I think the fact of the matter is that 3D CGI would, will probably never look as as artistic, as expressive, as hand-drawn artwork, you know? I like that little flat flatness and the expressive line work, the little uh, accidental, you know, scribbles that happen when you do a certain line, you know, the, the line widths and stuff, you know, where if you accidentally move your hand one way, you end up with a very interesting line. It's really hard to get that in 3D, you know, you can use all the uh, cartoon renders and cell shaders and stuff that you want, but it's never going to look anything like this. So I do prefer the 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 the, the hand drawn looking stuff. Um, but I'm not adverse, uh, you know, I'm not opposed to technology, and the the exploiting of technology to my advantage you know this this whole thing with being able to motion capture data and apply it to 2d characters it's it's a re revolutionary thing it's a uh, if it can be mastered i mean it can go a long ways towards i mean can you imagine being able to produce entire 30 minute cartoon episodes in a day or two I mean, that, that's unheard of, but it's not necessarily implausible <laughs> um, because as you can see here, I mean, an actor can literally perform most of the motions and stuff that you need to create a cartoon, a 2D cartoon, and... Uh, And do it very fast, you know. In conjunction with an animator, you can take that motion capture data and make it more extreme, you know. Make the poses even more extreme. Just tweak it out and post, you know. I think it's a, it'd be a very good improvement to the workflow. But anyways, this is uh, my little thing for today. And uh, 
I don't know. If you're not using this technology yet, I would seriously recommend that you start looking into it because it's just ridiculous not to be able, not to take advantage of it. And uh, if you have some tips, you have some experience with this, uh, how do I can actually convert the uh, motion capture data in 3D Exchange to get better results, I would be, I mean, I'll be your best friend. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I would be forever grateful for any tips, tricks that you can uh, give me so that I can continue, uh, I, you know, working with this, uh, this type of technology and hopefully get to a point where I can start using it uh, on a professional level um, and not just playing around. But uh, at this time, it's still, you know, the technology itself is still highly experimental. The perception neuron uh, suits, um, the, they are, they're still technically like a beta phase. People are still learning how to use and what they can use. Don't expect too much support from them. Uh, you pretty much have to find your own way. So we're kind of pioneering a new, a new uh, way of working. I mean, this might include learning a new style of acting for performers, you know, acting for 2D, uh, acting for 2D motion capture, I don't know. Uh, combination with, uh, you know, editing motion capture files to look more traditionally animated. Uh, there's a lot to be explored here and uh, hopefully I'll be able to produce more videos like this uh, soon. Uh, this is more of an experimental video for me and uh, I'm gonna try to actually get some uh, tutorial stuff done as well. I'd like to start doing some uh, live streams. And uh, so if you have any questions about this type of uh, thing, feel free to send them my way. You know, I'd like to be able to do some live streams and demonstrations and stuff. And uh, I have questions of, of my own, you know, I'm, I'm still learning this thing, so. All right, I'm gonna sign off. My name is Ibis, and uh, feel free to get a hold of me uh, if you have any questions or if you have any answers for me, which would be a hell of a lot better <laughs> from where I'm standing. All right, bye.